Hey everybody, Psychosaurus is here. Welcome back to Age of Empires Online. And today, it's time for the last advisor set video. This time it's gonna be the Norse, the last safe remaining. And if you're wondering about the Greeks, Egyptians, Celts, I did those a long time ago. I said this in the Persian video, so yeah, it's from like last year, so make sure to check check out those those might be a little bit outdated but i have to check in it myself i'm pretty sure they still hold up to date if there's gonna be some big change happening anytime soon i might make one big update video for those if it happens though so if there's gonna be some big changes i might consider making some more advisor sets maybe it, if it will be global who knows nothing nothing's sure yet but let's get to the norse advisor sets and let's start with number one and that should be i would say if you've ever played norse then you know about berserkers and they are probably the number one unit choice for you as norse Quite simple, they have pretty good health, they have pretty good damage, they have charge, which actually does not have cooldown, so they move quite fast, if there are enemy units nearby, so that is nice, they have pretty okay damage, though I, I wouldn't say it's super high as, let's say, with Celtic Champions, but it's still pretty close, it's pretty okay damage, most important, they have splash damage, how big? Well, the area is two, so that's pretty, pretty big area for a melee unit, okay? And that's the, their biggest strength, the splash damage. And because their damage is quite high as well, obviously they do a lot of damage in those big fights, so easy clear for you when dealing with those big armies. Now, a few things about Berserkers. They are very expensive namely the gold if you take a look at the berserker cost which we can right away the base cost is 140 gold plus 60 foot 60 foot is not that high for a two pop unit that, that's pretty okay food cost that's actually not as high if you compare it to some one pop unit that would cost 30 foot that's like hippo space okay but like 140 gold that's huge okay but still, it's not as high as the one, one pop cost of the Royal Guards for the Babylonians. Remember, those cost 110 per pop. These guys cost only 100, so still not that, that expensive. But still, this is a lot, okay? 140 gold. This is one of the weaknesses, I would say. Plus, the champion upgrade, H4, it is very expensive as well, 1200 gold. So getting into Berserkers late game will just cost you a lot of gold. So obviously caravans will be needed. And that is part of the issue I see with Berserkers. Their base speed is also, it's just the base speed of 6. So it's not like they are too slow. But obviously it's a heavy unit. You want to get it into the fight as soon as possible without the jumping upgrade. They might not be performing that well as you would expect, okay? So it's very important to reach the H4, get the champion upgrade, and they can start charging, and that's where the demolition begins. They still can take a lot of damage, so it's not like they will be performing even without champion upgrade. That like that it would be too poor, but champion upgrade definitely helps. So about the advisor sets. What I prefer to do uh, with Berserkers is try to lower the cost as much as possible. Because that definitely is one of the weaknesses, just like with Royal Guards, the high cost. Luckily, unlike the Royal Guards, they don't lack with their defensive power, like they have base infantry armor, base pierce armor of 0.3, so that's pretty cool with them. They have pretty good health, especially if you combine them with Chief. So that's pretty good, okay? Berserkers are not that bad 
with the defense. But obviously, you want to fully upgrade them. And once you start producing them, you will need a lot of caravans. So the reducing the cost on them means, hey, I don't need that many caravans. And so this is going to be more focused on this. So H1. Obviously, it's your choice. Again, H1, H2, most likely it will be your choice. Whatever you prefer, whatever you want to do. Now let's talk about some preferred H1 advisors. What you might do. So Philon is actually a really good advisor for you. Why? Because your infantry can build military buildings. And if you can speed up their construction speed, it helps a lot. And infantry units don't have any way to actually improve the construction speed. So you need to lower the buildings, build times. And so Philon really helps. And remember the base construction rate of infantry units is 0 0.5 so they build at the half speed of a villager so for example if you had to build barracks with villager it would take you 50 seconds with norse infantry it will take you 100 seconds that's what it means obviously we're talking about base values but you get the idea so yeah philon is definitely a great choice here for you if you're planning to utilize the Norse infantry for building the military buildings can be okay with berserkers, but most players what will do is actually just take villagers, go build the military buildings with the villagers because it's gonna be much faster. And building the military buildings with infantry is gonna be something you might wanna do early game because you save the precious work time of your villagers, but you have to remember it takes a while to build barracks for your infantry units. If you get at least four infantry units, then you cut the build time in half. So with the starting spearman, add in like another spearman, and it's like 50 seconds base build time. But yeah, Philon can be a really good choice for you. Irene, also pretty good choice. You have a lot of storehouse upgrades, full Farming upgrades, full wood gathering upgrades, tier 2 for both gold and stone mining. So definitely it's a good choice as well. Pin bar, obviously if you want to go fishing boats. Leonorius, we're talking about berserkers. I will talk about Leonorius later in other advisor set. But yeah, because we will be focused on berserkers, you don't really want to do Leonorius. Chahriar if you need to, but usually most likely you will not. Leukon, for you as Norse, you actually have advantage that you have two starting scouts. So Leukon can be an interesting option, but if we take a look, it's just a lot of movement speed, a lot of pierce armor. Then building your outpost is much cheaper. Remember, Norse have outposts, not watch posts. It, they actually allow you to build or not build train war dogs. So outposts cheaper can be an interesting option for you as Norse when you're thinking about producing dogs. Again, we'll talk about this in other advisor set. Tutmos if you want wood, Cleon if you want gold, especially if you're very limited on gold, or you're playing quests where you can only mine gold, this can be a good option for you. Apep, if you have good amount of early food sources around your starting location, this is good advisor for you. Muikmeron, if you want the cheaper storehouses. Erastos, if you need a lot of stone. Zephyrus, no, ignore him, he does not exist for you. Akalton, if you want to save a lot of food early on your villagers. Valin is an interesting option, and we'll talk about H2 advice that goes really well with Valin that you might consider this and I don't have him here but Odysseus is also a very good advisor for you to consider when going with berserkers again I want to make sure my berserkers are not that expensive and Odysseus here helps a lot because 10% discount on all of your infantry units not only that it will help you with your early defenses by training your other infantry units but once you reach the late game you start producing the berserkers 
hey they will be 10 percent cheaper so odysseus definitely is also a good option for you unfortunately i don't have him here need to do more skirmish for the advisors but yeah from what i have here i would say iring is really good i don't really need Philon because i'll be most likely using the villages like i said but anything is pretty much an option for h2 now let's just go through this Agwald will be mentioned later. Higgins. I am not really a fan of Higgins. Again, health regen. I don't find it that good. If Berserkers... Berserkers have good armor. You can obviously get some good cloth armor on the, them. That also increases their armor further. Then it can go nicely with Higgins. Because, hey, combining armor with healing... That's a good life choice. Britomatus, if you need the TCs, plus they can be used for early defense. Remember recently the thing about Norse and Roman TCs where they had extra HP if you were starting in H2 or in H3 has been removed. So no longer you will be able to have that power for TCs. Okay, remember that. But it is still a good option, okay? Sometimes you just can use the fast TC, use it for defense, start producing the villages faster. Bone boot is cheaper buildings, obviously. Doom Nordix is an option if you want to set up your caravans as soon as possible without the high cost, plus you also improve the effectiveness. Heraclides, this is obviously a good choice. Why? Again, cheaper berserkers, and I need to also mention, berserkers have very huge training time and even though you have them at the barracks with the barracks stacks lowering the training times they still have quite a huge training time for an infantry unit i think this ends you can take a look actually what's their base train time 25 seconds that's actually huge okay if you compare this to even cavalry units you can see even those train at low time so this is really huge training time so the train time here works really nicely as well so definitely i would suggest heraclitus because yes cheaper that's good for you faster training that's again good for you now obviously king ranus is here if you want the fast caravans through a lot of markets Muikvenon. This one is actually very important to mention. 20% lower cost on your all units, actually. This is all units, plus all upgrades. So that means that getting the Berserkers will cost you less gold, which is good. Then you don't have to train that many caravans to be able to maintain the production. Plus, your upgrades are cheaper, which means armor attacks will be cheaper. Barracks tax, barracks tax will be also cheaper, so obviously this helps, but most important, the champion upgrade will be much cheaper. Remember, 1200 gold, so 240 gold less for that upgrade, that helps a lot. And then, Berserkers cheaper for the rest of the game. Muikmenon is another great option for you when going Berserkers. You can save some population on the caravans, which means more units for you. That's really good. You get the fully upgraded Berserkers sooner, thanks to the lower gold cost. Especially for the champion upgrade. Muikvenon, great choice, in my opinion. Kletos, if you need the uh, armor attacks as soon as possible, it's definitely a great option as well. Okay, water trading, if you need the gold through the merchant transport, Pericles is here. Definitely good advisor. Zeno, for maximum effectiveness caravans, that's your option as well, plus you train them faster, so again, you can reach your, your full economy sooner, but it will also cost you the full price of caravan, so careful with that, you, you will need enough food and wood income to maintain the production of caravans. Okay, we can skip this agape. Like I said, berserkers are not too expensive on food, so you don't really need to focus that much on food. Doesn't hurt, because hey, 
you can utilize food for your villagers as well or your other infantry units okay this one this is what i've been talking about with valen Odun. this is very strong advisor why because one wood per second per long house is actually insane remember you have long houses you don't have your typical house so you can build only 12 long houses which means up to 12 wood per second that is huge if you combine it with Valen. Because now you suddenly have access to your population, you're generating wood, at what rate? 12 per second. You know what it means? That's actually 720 wood per minute. Per minute. Okay? And you need to remember that. If I had to build four markets with nanos, that would cost me only 250 wood. So I would save 750. You see what I mean? Pretty much Odun will generate you the s almost the same amount of wood as Nanus would save you with four markets in a minute. That's how insane Odun is. And I just will say that this advisor needs nerves and I don't really want to pick him because he's stupidly strong. Obviously, I like him for some specific units. When I want to use him, like let's say I did one time far orders only in more man medians. That was fun to use him, but still that's a lot of wood. Way too much wood, if you ask me. Punch if you want more defense from your towers, that's there. Conal, same as Higgins. Thought. Thought I would say it's okay to use because it helps you with your villager caravan production plus your early infantry units and it will transition well into the berserkers as well it's just berserkers cost mainly the gold so it's not gonna be that huge but it's definitely an advisor you can decide to go with and then obviously there's andrasta if you want to make berserkers faster but like i said if i had to choose my best choices would be heracleides or muikmenon Remember, you might be getting more with Zeno from Caravans, but Muikmeron also boosts the amount of, well, by saving the gold, obviously it's like you would be earning more gold. But yeah, Muikmeron, not only that he affects Caravans, he affects also gold mining, or you could say also selling resources. That is an option as well. So all the gold income you have with Muikmeron, it's like that gold is much more effective for you. So that's why I would say Muikmenon is better option. But Zeno is there as well. And if you are thinking about it, Zeno will transition well into the late game if you're not reaching the full distance with your caravans. If you, you are able to reach the full distance with caravans, then Muikmenon is the better option. Okay, so that's why I would prefer Muikmenon. But Heraclitus is here as well. So that's the H1, H2 okay let's continue h3 now just quickly scrolling through this there's pretty much nothing really much for you to choose from but let's start here verka civilianos this is an option make your berserkers move, move faster but remember once you have the champion upgrade your berserkers will be charging at the enemy units and that speed is already really good so although verka civilianos can help you you don't really need him once you are late game like when you are h3 or until you get the champion upgrade he's gonna be good but then you don't really need him so verka Silvanos is an okay option but consider the other options rather honestly for us if you want to reach the golden age as soon as possible again this can be really good because then you can get the champion upgrade sooner get the access to the h4 advisor so this is definitely an option for you as well but most likely what you will do is pump fills demolish buildings what else you need to say make sure to end the quests as soon as possible you need to destroy the buildings and because berserkers have splash damage this actually really works nicely when you're dealing with walls because you can attack the nodes 
and bam, the walls go down faster. So with Pamphilos, this works really well. So I would say Pamphilos is the best option here for you when going with Berserkers. You could go Sophia, but like I said, you don't really need that much food. And at this point, I mean H3, you don't really need her, okay? Viriatos is an option if you have problems with enemy priests. That is an option. But remember, you can also build towers with Berserkers. So, hey, build towers, lure the priest to your towers, they're dead. Also works. And obviously we have the, like the defensive building advisors. Those can be used, but most likely you will not really use them. You don't really have... You don't really want them, okay? You want to make sure your Berserkers are as, are as effective as possible. So yeah, I would say Pamphilos is the best option here with like Honestly Force being the second one and then Vekasilonos the third one. Okay, H4. Now, let's exclude the legendary advisors for now. What you might want to pick. You might consider Theocles, but then you have to remember Norse also have advisor King Theod, which buffs your chiefs, which is huge numbers, but you don't really want to lose your chief and what I usually do is just put him on defensive stance and just make him stand behind and that at that point he won't really take damage he, I won't be worried about losing him it's a little shame because he can do some nice damage as well to help you but if you don't want to lose him yeah you pretty much can do this and so you won't really need the health you won't really need the regen so what you might consider is the bonus health you're getting here. And this is why I'm going to tell you, always pick Theocles. Now, why Theocles? Number one, the health buff from King Theod is applied only to your Berserkers if the chief is nearby. So they need to stay close to the chief to actually get the health boost. That's one reason. If you have Berserkers, spread it out, they won't be getting the buff, so you won't really see any difference. But if you have Theocles, not only that you are getting the buff globally, so you don't have to get the Chief or the Berserker stand too close to the Chief, you are also getting a little bit more health with Theocles. Why? I need to explain this, because King Theod, it says plus that the uh, okay how is it said uh, grants an additional 15% health to nearby friendly units if you remember chief has aura that increases nearby all friendly units 20% only your units not if you have co partner it won't affect them but for you for your units it increases health by how much by 20% if you pick king teot the 15% here actually means that the chi will now increase the health by 35%. This is actually adding the value, not multiplying it. And if you are using Theocles, this will actually multiply it. So you will be getting slightly more health. You don't have to make your unit stand close to the chief to get the effect. Theocles is going to be the better option. And this is... Like, why I kind of dislike Teod right now. It's not a bad advisor. It's just... There's better option. But yeah, if you don't have Theocles, King Teod is still a good option. If you're using your Chief in combat, King Teod can help you with your Chief. But, like I said, if you're more focused on the Berserkers, Theocles is gonna be the better option. Alternative would be King Agamemnon, which is a nice thing because hey the five percent damage actually goes into your splash damage as well so any damage improvement for your berserkers is really good and five percent health sure it's not as good as the other two but it's still a nice buff burika if you have problem with the resources definitely can help you and if you want to support them with log throwers demo is there as well now about the legendary advisors, now we can ignore Finulfu, that's a horseman advisor, 
Vemunder. I think I saw someone using actually Vemunder and like trying to use the dogs with the berserkers. So you have like the dogs mixed in with your berserkers, they will be soaking a lot of damage. One thing you need to remember, they are huntables, so there is no unit, almost. I don't, I don't think AI ever trains any unit that would do bonus damage to huntables. And those units that do damage, that there's only like a few units that actually do bonus versus huntables. I think villagers get it from their upgrade at the storehouse. Scouts do bonus versus huntables. And then there are druids that actually do bonus versus huntables. And I think that's all there is. And you don't see Kelt Kelts training druids. So yeah, war dogs are really good. And also because they're huntables, if you're playing quests where the enemy units have their natural bonus against everything. Well, it's not against everything, but you know, the typical infantry range, cavalry buildings. Huntables are not there, so that's again great bonus for your war dogs. So that's why Vemundu is quite a nice option. Your dogs will be so beefy, they'll be soaking a lot of damage. So that can be nice, you won't be losing that many berserkers. But then I would say, hey, maybe with a little bit more focus on the food income, maybe. I mean, dogs are not that expensive. It's like one one dog is like 30 food depending on the gear, but base cost is 25, so it's not bad, honestly, but if they last that, this long, sure. I would just say be careful against AIs that actually train units with splash, because then the dogs can be dying quite fast in my opinion. Splash is really good against them. What you will most likely want to pick is War Leader Biorix and this is I think straightforward you can see it more health lower cost more movement speed all three really good buffs you reach the golden age you don't have the champion upgrade movement speed helps health helps in general you don't have to replace your berserkers that often that works really nicely movement speed hey berserkers get to the f fight sooner those that you replace and, like I said, they are expensive, so lower cost definitely helps here. And that's the Berserkers, which are like the number one choice for you when playing as Norse. Now let's move on to second option, which you might want to go, which is the Color Units. And since the recent Advisor reworks and changes, Raiders has... Raiders have actually become really good units, in my opinion. And Horsemen... I mean, with the Legendary Advisor... I would say they are very comparable to Raiders. That's what I'm gonna say. But yeah. Let's talk about, about the Advisor. So, for H1, this is pretty much the same. You can exclude Philon because you will be using mostly Villagers, but if you like Philon, he's still an option. But everything else pretty much stays. Just don't go Odysseus. He won't really help you with cavalry. But everything else stays. That's pretty much the same. For H2. Obviously switch Heracleides for Hermolaus. For the cavalry units. This is actually really nice because you don't have any way to buff the training times of your cavalry units. So Hermolaus works really nicely. To help you. And you will need a lot of stables if you want to fully fill your army of cavalry units okay because if you're using finulfer those horsemen will be one pop raiders are naturally one pop so you will need a lot of sta stables hermolaus helps you with the training time to get the army out as soon as possible so definitely you want to consider her but yeah, other than that King Narmer is an option from the skirmish. I don't have him here, as you could see. Again, Dumnorix, the caravans, that pretty much stays. Kletos, that stays. Muikmeron is pretty good. Zeno is here as well. Odun, just really strong advisor. And it definitely helps with your stables. Because stables cost 250 wood instead of 200 like barracks. So definitely it's a good advisor for you. 
and it's definitely the strongest wood advisor okay so if you want the wood he's your choice Todd is here as well I would suggest going with Todd when going with the horsemen because they cost I would say a lot of food especially once once you have access to fennel for those horsemen are quite very expensive for one pop unit so getting your full army will take a while and Todd will just help you with that food income but like I said Hermolaus is here it's better for you but she won't help you with the early economy with the villagers with the caravans so definitely and uh, yeah I would suggest picking Muikmeron over Todd when you're going with the raiders but yeah this is pretty much about the same Andrasta if you want the movement speed but that's it it's pretty much the same as with in infantry just go cavalry okay h3 now we have Hathor she's actually I would say she's worth considering because of the pierce armor here but other than that I would not really consider her because bonus against ranged units and siege you don't really need this at, as Norse I would say raiders are already really good they already have bonus against ranged so you don't need that against siege they are very fast so they will get to the siege and practically take no damage so you don't really have to worry about the crush armor and since they can easily keep the distance they can easily do the damage to the enemy siege so i would not really consider this for raiders for horsemen it can be considered but horsemen on the other hand have bonus against siege so you don't really have to worry about siege they have some natural pierce armor raiders do as well so not really worried about the ranged either and crush armor i mean both cavalry units raider is faster much faster but still they have 0.5 crush armor so crush armor is not something that i would consider really it is an option in some quests you might use hunter but it is not like number one choice castle arrows definitely if you want a higher speed definitely worth choosing honestly for us this is especially i guess both both units are worth con could be worth considering honestly for us because once you get the h4 you have huge power spike for both of those units either final for or what's her name ingrid i always forget the name yes ingrid so for bo both of those you definitely could consider honestly for just to get the huge power spike at h4 with the advisors becoming active it's definitely a good option here as well and then obviously there is low rasp if you want to make them more resistant towards against infantry which is definitely true if you're going for for the horsemen because they are slower they won't outrun the enemy infantry plus raiders also have snare immunity so the spearman snare won't work against raiders so you can just get away from the enemy speedman and just go focus down the enemy production with raiders so not that you will you would need lohrasp but once you need to clear the enemy units lohrasp can be useful there and if those raiders actually take some hits the extra armor helps sofia is nice if you need the food viriatos against priests and otherwise it's pretty much the same so yeah you have few options here now let's go h4 and again let's exclude the legendary advisor here that means horsemen are gone okay horsemen without finulfer don't really have that good stats to actually make them consider that much they can be used but definitely without finulfer you will not see their power being that good okay but yeah if you don't have Finulfer, you will just consider Raiders and what you might consider. Agamemnon is here if you don't have anything else. Burika for the economy, but if you're going Raiders, you definitely want Ingrid. And I think this is just straightforward. More damage, more health and critical hit chance. 
So again, more damage. This is huge amount of stats, if you ask me. Three times twenty. That is huge. And I, I keep hit. Suddenly, I hear some weird noise. I don't know what it is. Maybe it's in my head. But yeah, Ingrid, just a lot of stats. You can see it. Definitely, if you're going Raiders, this is something you need to consider. You could consider Timo, but because you're going Cavalry, Timo with Lock Throwers, that's just slow. You're just faster sending your Raiders in and just destroy the buildings. Or Horsemen, as you need. As depends what you're going for and then we got the Finulfer and one thing I have to say about Finulfer right now I kind of dislike that he's got nerfed recently because I already felt like that the way he was was actually pretty good I never felt like like that going horseman would make me feel super strong unless few certain quests but that's just what they do because they already have bones against siege. Come on, elite meat increase is just gonna be nice and easy with horsemen because they easily destroy calorie waves. They easily destroy the siege. Ranged units are not that great against them. It's just the infantry waves you need to be afraid of. So I just feel like Finulfer was pretty okay at at the stage he was. Now with the nerves. I am a little bit considered about the horseman because with these stats and the Ingrid buff, I dare to say that raiders and horsemen are on the same level. I'm not even joking. Just go into the unit stats, try to build your raiders, build your horsemen, and look at the stats next to each other. Raiders are just gonna be cheaper, they will be faster. With snare immunity, about the same amount of health, about the same amount of damage, or depending how you scale the units, depending on the gear. But it should be like health wise, damage wise, they should be about as equal as they are. Well, I mean, that's just it. They'll just get about as equal. Now, horsemen obviously have bonus against cavalry, they have bonus against siege. Which works really well for them, but they are also more expensive, slower. It's just, it's just that, okay? The Raider definitely will be nice that you are utilizing their speed, their snare immunity. It's easier with them to get in through the enemy units, or around the enemy units, I should say. If they get hit, you don't care. You have snare immunity. You just try to get in and destroy the enemy productions and it's definitely gonna be easier with freighters if you do it with horsemen they will be destroying in the buildings faster thanks to the final first bonus against buildings although it's gonna be more expensive for you so if you can afford the horsemen that's nice okay but raiders cheaper faster easier to get into so i dare to say I would prefer Raiders over Horsemen right now. But definitely try Horse Lord Funeral for. I, sh I should say this way try playing a quest, try it one time with Horsemen, try it one time with Raiders, and then compare which one felt easier for you. Or maybe even faster. There might be quests where horsemen are going to be good because, hey, they counter cavalry. But I dare to say that most of the times, raiders are just going to be better. And that's what I seriously dislike about this Finulfer nerf. This nerf just moved the horsemen on the same level as horsemen after the Ingrid buff. And this is again why I dislike the overstarting advisors because then suddenly. This unit is on the same level as this unit with Legendary Advisor. What? I mean, I would expect that when I get the Legendary Advisor, the unit will be very powerful. But when you tell me that I have a unit on the same level as a unit with Epic Advisor, 
that's worth thinking about but yeah let's end it here just try them both for yourself try different builds because sometimes hey you might need like sort of tiberius on your raider to actually make it work but be sure to try them out because raiders are definitely really powerful right now let's move on and again we're talking about some pretty good advisor sets but not that good as the previous ones and let's start with this one which is chief amunder h4 which will buff your war dogs with a lot of range units namely the bowman you don't want to go skirmisher guys Re remember that you don't want to go skirmishers they might be nice right now if you dare to counter the enemy ranged units and that's it that's all they are doing countering ranged units the damage output is terrible they just have huge bonus against ranged that's the only thing that makes skirmishers good otherwise no never use them for now they are not that good unit just early game counter against ranged so yeah you want to do bowman plus dogs for this h1 again it's up to you you can go tutmos or the wood i again suggest agaton because then i don't have to focus too much on the food villages will be cheaper that's nice what you will need guyana h2 this is definitely what you want because you will have a lot of bowmen pretty much most of your population will be bowmen the rest will be villagers or caravans but you will have a lot of bowmen easily you can get like 120 bowmen and that's just if even less than what you should what you could get you could get up to like 160 and still have pretty good economy through the food I, I would say you should focus mostly on food with your villagers and then have few caravans on the gold and if you need to buy the wood for the bowman hay or replace the bowman you need to gold that's it but i dare to say like you can get 150 160 bowman so that's why guyana because you will have a lot of bowmen you want to make sure they have the range so you can utilize as many of them at the same time as as possible and that's why h3 you have the bear hunter Thorhild because that's the advisor that will easily get you over for the range on your bowmen if you have the range gear on your bowmen obviously but yeah 30 percent maximum range that's just huge that's what you want plus they will move faster which works nicely with the dogs because they are fast so easy for you to move you could consider lo sohrab as well but maximum range is gonna be better for you when dealing with the enemy units make sure the bowmen stay as far away from the enemy units as possible and then also be able to destroy the enemy buildings without getting attacked back but because you will be using dogs you might even consider Sohrab a little bit more because hey you your bowman will be protected but then you cannot utilize the numbers that well so it's up to you okay either destroy buildings faster or utilize the range against enemy units as well as the buildings and i don't think there's anything else really worth considering otherwise this is pretty much what you want to get and h4 obviously you want chief wonder buffing dogs how much 300 percent more health this is actually huge remember what i said hunt dogs are huntables enemy units don't have bonus against dogs only scouts maybe villagers how often do you see villagers attacking how often do you see druids never so dogs really great frontline unit okay plus you get 36 more with the Munder. so you go from 24 once you have their upgrade at the outpost and go up to 60 dogs and each of them can have i dare to i think they can get over 1000 health you should also consider using chief that's what i should say consider using chief because 20 percent more health for your dogs as well that's really nice and i also need to mention the leucon here because you will be going with dogs 
guess what? You will need to build outposts to actually be able to produce the dogs. The more outposts you have, more dogs for you to replace faster. So definitely Leucon is also an option here. But it can depend on the quest, okay? Sometimes you might want to consider Leucon if you want to try the cheaper outpost. But Agaton, cheaper villagers, in my opinion, still better option. Okay, that's ranged plus dogs. Now, another unit composition. Let me switch that a little bit here. And we are gonna go with hard jars plus block throwers. Now, I took a look at hard jar some time ago and I was like, they are a pretty good tank unit. And then when I try them in action, they can take a lot of damage, that's true, but then there are also some damages you don't really want to take with hard jars. Like, for example, you don't really want them to fight elephants because that hurts. They have no cavalry armor, splash hurts them a lot, and they are quite expensive. So here, again, H1 is up to you, it's pretty much similar to what I said with the Berserkers, H2, I would say Thought is your best option because Arjars, unlike Berserkers, cost mainly food. So the food discount here is more than enough. But Heraclitus is there as well. The training time here is not that bad as with Berserkers. So Thought is definitely a good choice here for you. But yeah, other options are still there. Now, H3, you definitely want to pick Harjar. And back in the day when I was thinking about this, Harjar had only Pierce armor and increased the construction speed of Harjars. Now, what do you have? You have more Pierce armor, more Crush armor, and more Splash armor. I should say Splash damage protection or how is it called? I don't remember the exact naming, but yeah, the protection from Splash, I should say. This is actually really good right now, after the latest changes to the advisor. So Pierce Armor, obviously, great, great thing for your infantry units. Why? What's really doing a lot of damage to infantry? Most likely Bowman. That's most likely what you'll see. Otherwise, you'll see other infantry. Hard Jars, no problem with other infantry. They have huge armor. Especially once you get their champion upgrade. Bowman? I just have some base pierce armor, but it's definitely not something that would keep them alive forever or really long. So the pierce armor here definitely helps. Now crush armor is really nice. Why? Because their base crush armor is only 0 0.3. So it's definitely not on the same level as like some heavy infantry units or some fast moving infantry units. For example, hoplites or volt traders. So Crush Armor definitely helps here. And it was definitely something I saw being big issue with Hard Jars. Like taking the Crush damage really hurt them a lot. And it was definitely one of their weaknesses. So Crush Armor definitely helps. And because there is no other way to improve it, it's definitely something I appreciate. And the Splash Damage Protection is another thing I have to appreciate it. If you fight Harjar 1v1, that's pretty good for you because Harjars just take a lot of damage. If you fight infantry, it takes a long time. But when I fought the elephants, that splash seriously hurt. It seriously hurt. Because no cavalry armor, it hurt a lot. So I definitely appreciate the splash damage protection here. It definitely is really useful for your hard jars. And I definitely need to go and try hard jars again in some quest. So definitely pick how hard when going hard jars. You could consider pump fillers, you could consider that. But that's for the building the motion, that's why we get the log throwers. And I was considering if hard jars are really good tank unit, I need some good backline to support them, to do the damage. And when you take a look at Norse, what do they have? Skirmishers, definitely no. Bowmen, 
That's pretty good. But then you're losing the H3 advisor for the bowmen. And the bowmen are definitely not one of the highest DPS bowmen in the game. It's pretty mediocre. I would say like 50 DPS. It's not bad. But it's still like not on the same level as let's say Toxodes or the Celtic Bowman. You could consider throwing Axemen. That is an option. But then I say for throwing Axemen, you want to pick Aqualt H2. And this works against hard jars because then you don't have to thought. And so hard jars are very expensive. And this does not really help you against units such as catapults or the enemy ranged units because hard jars let's be honest they are not the fastest before they, re they reach the siege before they reach the range they will take a lot of damage and you want to minimize that and this is why i can i thought of the log throwers why because they do crush damage they definitely do really well against enemy siege because they do again crush damage siege has no Rush armor, so that's one great huge thing about them. They do bonus against siege, so again that helps. They do just fine against ranged units. Sure, it's not on the same level as ballista or catapult, but still it's pretty good to use them. And then they also have some bonus, small bonus against infantry. I think it's like 50% from the champion upgrade, if I remember. So you can utilize them against infantry as well. And if you get enough of them, you can actually deal nicely with cavalry units as well. And log throwers, unlike polytons, cost only free population once you get that champion upgrade. So you can definitely have a lot of log throwers. And I definitely recommend trying this for yourself. It's definitely a build that can work. And I remember beating Valley of King with this build. Some time ago, it was like an hour and a half, a little, little bit more. But yeah, a little over an hour and a half for me to beat that Valley of King with this build. Been a long time ago, and I remember those elephants were just oof. And I remember trying it once, it didn't work out because I couldn't take out the elephants. Second time, yes, I had more log throwers, they took out the elephants. Or rather, I should have focused more on the elephants and kept rebuilding the barracks. That's what I should have, what I've improved. But yeah, this is the hard job plus lock thrower. I definitely like this build a lot. Works nicely. I recommend trying this, especially with the buffed Havard or rather changed Havard. Hard jobs should be definitely a nice option. Okay, and what am I missing? I should mention probably Chief Amunder and I'm not gonna go for the other advisors, it's just gonna be the same as with other infantry and that's gonna be, be like Ulf, Ulf Herins plus War Dogs. I would say if you like with the Berserkers I said that you mix in the dogs to soak the damage then you easily replace them, Berserkers won't be taking that much damage, you won't have to replace them that much, you will save the resources. Here it's gonna be the same just with Ulf Hedins. and personally I haven't tried this and I'm also not a huge fan of Ulf Hedins. I just feel like that unit, it looks like it's supposed to do a lot of damage but it never felt like that they ever did that much damage. I never felt that the damage output is as high as the tooltip suggests. That's just my feeling. So I'm not really suggesting this, but it could be an interesting option to try. What I want to suggest, and this is something I like doing with the Norse. I'm going to need this, and this is where actually I switch to the Leonorios. And finally, we'll talk about the Throwing Axeman and Spearman combo. Now, this combo might require a few pieces of gear for you to actually work. But it works, you can actually beat, for example, Clusium with this build. It's not gonna be the fastest, I haven't managed to get the Wonder Time, time Challenge with this build, but I was able to beat Clusium. 
So this just tells you that this build just works. It's just not as fast as you would expect, unfortunately. But it is a good build, and I definitely suggest to give it a try. But you will need a few pieces of gear. For the Froming Axeman, you will need the Axe of the Piercing Frost. So definitely, if you don't have one, if there's no one offering it, and I saw like on the global market one for like few thousand coins. You can actually check this real fast. It's great axe, legendary. If we just take a look. Ooh, the axe of the Ice King is quite cheap actually. Why is Brand so expensive? No, no. Stupid. That's that's the worst axe. Never pick this one. Better pick the champion, okay? But yeah, look at this. The axe of the piercing frost. Seven seven thousand coins, fifteen thousand, twenty thousand, twenty-two thousand. That axe is very cheap on global market. So if you don't have it yet, definitely consider getting it. Because this is one of the requirements for this build to actually make it work pretty well. Because you will need the maximum range. For your throwing axeman to actually utilize the numbers. Second, but it is not like mandatory for you to get, but it's definitely worth getting, and that's the spear of the piercing frost. And if you remember talk, me talking about the dead spear, it is I would say one of the best spears you can get, especially when you consider the more difficult quest. Namely, 5-star, 4-star quest where the enemy gets a lot of armor attacks or you're fighting heavily armored units in general. Now, let's talk about this. So, what do you want to do? You most likely will want to pick Leonardo's H1. This has however few issues. So, if you pick him, Spearman will do more damage. That's really good. Once you reach the Golden Age, bam, Spearman do even more damage. This is actually nice. They, I think they can get... Easily over 50 damage for Norse Spearman, that's actually pretty huge value. Maybe even closer to 60. But sometimes you cannot just afford Leonorius because you need to make sure, hey, I need to afford villagers, I need to make sure I have enough resources. You might consider Agaton in that at that point. So Agaton or Leonorius. Consider those two. H2 you will want Aqualt, 100%. Why? Because you want to utilize the Piercing Frost range, the Axe of the Piercing Frost, I mean, for your Framing Axeman, that will get 50% range from that, then you get another 50% here, and suddenly, hey, your Framing Axeman have 22.5 range. And that's definitely good, because once you have the mass of Framing Axeman, that range is going to be very useful to you. Now, it makes Axemen weaker early, which is shame, because they won't do that much damage until you get the critical mass of them. So, that's, again, a little bit weakness here, but if you get the critical mass, hey, that will do a lot of damage. H3, you will want pump fills. You want to destroy the enemy buildings as fast as possible. Following Axemen, although they have ranged attack, they actually do full damage to buildings. Why? Because they do melee infantry damage. So that's, again, your advantage. And utilizing the numbers of Romeo Axemen with Pump Philos, hey, you will do actually a lot of damage to buildings. And this is definitely important to mention. Hey, if you want, want to have as many units attacking the enemy walls and do as much damage, yes, this is going to work for you. So definitely you should pick Pamphilos, but if you don't want Pamphilos, then obviously Vakasivilaunos is here as well. Onesiphoros is also an option, but we are talking about two units that are not that expensive to get the upgrades, and they can wait for this. But yeah, once you reach the Golden Age, you need Bjorn here. You could consider Theoclis, obviously, if you don't have Bjorn, but then, hey, you don't have the damage. It's just boosted Agamemnon for your Spearman and from your Axeman. 20% more health and more damage. It used to be 15. And when I beat it cool soon, it was 15%, okay? <laughs> so with the 5% extra here for both stats, it has become even better. But like I said, you will need the pieces of gear, preferably the piercing frost. 
you can see that's a very cheap axe definitely get that one if you don't have it or wait for the winter event piercing frost spear it's definitely sh something you should get but sometimes you might not find it okay preferably get health for your spear make sure they can survive the front line as long as possible you might even consider the 35 percent health and damage heavy spear i don't remember who which stores got it I f is it the fire of oasis one i have it here hang on i think i have it here don't i let me check no wait here yes cypress cohort that's the one it's the cypress spear so this one could be considered for the high health for your spearmen and so they will be really good frontline this is also a really good option but get a piercing frost axe that's the most important part of this build and what is happens hey your spearmen will take a lot of damage Norse spearmen already have the highest health when we exclude advisors like for egyptian and so on they have very high health thanks to the champion upgrade and their base health so with this, you can easily get over 1000 health on your Spearman once you have the gear. Definitely a good thing for you. They will be doing a really good job at tanking the damage. If you have the right cloth armor, this can be also very important because then if you have like, let's say, extra infantry armor against the Romans, this can be nice. If you need the bonus edge protection because, hey, Romans use Scorpios and Bowmen, that is also a nice option, so choosing the cloth armor here is also important. Pro Axeman, maximum damage. Go maximum damage. And you might consider like Kitten of the Wolf. No, go go the my High Vizier if you have it. If not, hey, go go the Kitten of the Wolf. Just go maximum damage. They need to kill the units. And with the Igno armor, you will do full damage. And remember, you will be using the Piercing Frost, which already gives you like 20%. Then you get the champion upgrade, bam, it's 60%. If you have Sandra, hey, almost 70%. So that's pretty huge. That, that That's pretty much it. Throwing Axemen do full damage because they ignore armor. Spearmen, they protect the Axemen. They soak the damage because they have a lot of health. They, they do bonus against cavalry, so cavalry units, no problem. Enemy infantry units, no problem. It's the ranged that can be problem or the enemy siege. So you might even consider adding few log throwers into this unit composition, mainly to counter the enemy siege and ranged that you cannot reach that easily. That can be worth considering. But yeah, pure spearmen and from axemen can actually destroy Clusium. And I hope I'm not forgetting anything here because I think that's the last advisor set, less popular one, I think, yeah, that's pretty much it. Berserkers, Horsemen Raiders, Harjas with Lock Throwers, Throwing Axemen, Spearmen, Dogs plus Bowmen, yeah, I think that's it. So, time to move on, the last one, and that's the, ring, the Navy units. And this one actually depends on you. Now, for Norse, there is one disadvantage in comparison to the other saves. That is their arrow ships, the long boats, actually don't have extra range from the champion upgrade. They, that's the only exception there is. They are not getting extra range. They are getting extra damage. Luckily for you, they can serve as transports as well. So, yeah. You can utilize them for transporting units. That's a nice thing. But yeah, let's talk about the Navy. So, H1. 100% you want Tutmos, but obviously you can go Agaton, you can go Irene. It's up to you, but Tutmos most likely what you will go for, because you need the wood. Easy. H2. Horrors, 100%. Best for your naval combat effectiveness. Plus the train time can help you with your merchant transports as well. So if you're going for the water trading, yes, it is also really good. H3, it stays. Amon, Pitas, and Battleship. I don't have Battleship here, unfortunately. But yeah, Amon, 
if you want to focus on the long ships. Battleship pip if you want to focus on the fire ships. Pitas, it's rather an economy, but it can work in general. So like mixture of fire ships and long boats. H4 Triphon, easy, more damage for your naval. And that's pr pretty much it. That's pretty much all the advisor sets for the Norse I can think of right now out of my head. Hopefully I didn't forget anything. If you feel like I forgot something or I should have mentioned something or you know about some interesting build, hey, comment section is down there below the, this video. So make sure to put a comment there. And if you enjoyed this, please press the like button. If you want to see more, subscribe to the channel. And yeah, that's the end of the advisor sets. Finally, the last one. And you definitely can look forward for some video about one of these sets. And since most of these I've already done. I actually did Raiders, but it was with Alt Ingrid. Let's do Raiders next time. I already have video with Bowman plus Dogs. I think I did Hard Jaws plus Slug Throwers. I'm thinking Berserkers are normal, Horsemen. I did those. So I guess, I guess Raiders will be next one. Yeah, I, I think I've done everything else. I definitely did Spearman Plus from the Axeman. Last year during the winter event, was it? I think it was last year during the winter event. There. If you want to see those in action, make sure to check them, check those old videos. And yeah, I'll see you next time. Bye.